Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. I have uh, little birdhouse doodles today that we're gonna do. So grab a pen and paper or a pencil and paper or watercolors or whatever it is you wanna do and uh, let's doodle some of these. I really like the um, labels. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll be familiar with these labels. Uh, I do have a huge collection of them. I like to use them for instant ephemera so I can just stick them right in my book. Um, and I also like the challenge of sketching in a narrow space like this and coming up with some pleasing compositions. So that being said, grab whatever you've got and let's get started. So it is really dark in here right now. And if you hear thunder, it is a thunderstorm looming over my house right now. Um, there's some thunder right now and, uh, it is, uh, it's loud and it's pouring. So, which is great. I'm so happy for spring. Just bring it on. Get rid of my tons of feet of snow that I've got going on out there. Um, but that's what that noise is if you hear it. I'm going to be using a Micron today and a, a Uniball, whichever I might switch between the two. Um, I think, what size am I going to use? Let's use 0, 0 0.01. So these are a Micron. This is a Micron pen. Uh, it's archival ink and it's a 0 point, uh, zero 0.01, I think it's called. And that's how tiny that is, so it's pretty small. And I also sometimes jump, if I want to color in something pretty fast, a Uniball pen, which is also an archival ink, and this is an ink flow pen. So it just constantly flows ink as it's in contact with the paper. And it's nice for you to use all kinds of different uh, drawing mediums so you find something that you really like. But if you do want to add fluid to it, uh, watercolor or inks after, you're going to want something archival that doesn't bleed. Okay, so let's get started. Let's do some, let's do some doodles. I'm going to bring you down. And uh, this, this was something I just decided to draw. But if you guys have some ideas, I've got some suggestions that I'll be working on next. So please leave in the comments anything you'd like to see drawn. So let's start off with more of a simplified um, little birdie house here. So I'm going to go, I always try to start with a roof and I double line the roof. And you can Google different kind of birdhouses or actual homes and kind of get fun material ideas out of it. So this one I'm going to do an offset roof. I'm going to do a short roof on this side. And I'm just going to pull my lines down as straight as I can. But again, it is sketching, so it's fun. It's loose and it's fun. That's why I like to use scraps. I'm going to bring my roof line just a little bit further over the edge here. So the, the water drains off the roof. All right. And then I'm going to give a hole to where the birds go in. And the hole, I guess, as far as I was told, can depend on the kind of bird you want to keep in your house. So if it's a big hole, a bigger bird's going to get in. And I guess only certain birds would kind of use these houses. All right, I'm gonna now give a little piece of wood as to where this birdhouse would be attached to. So I'm gonna draw a bigger line underneath here and then an angle to each of those corners. And then I'm gonna go down and down. And you can speed me up or slow me down. I'm gonna go across and then I'm gonna bring down just a kind of stick that this is mounted to. So there's your birdhouse number one, and this is a face on perspective. So you can have fun with this and go up another house. So I'm gonna build up another house on top. Let's do a really tall one here. So the possibilities for these sketches are pretty much endless, which is what I kind of love about them. So maybe I'll do short on this side and longer on this side, just for something fun. There we go. I'm trying to darken up the second line under here because it'd be in a little bit of shadow. This roof would protrude forward over the house. We can make this a double decker. So we'll fill this in here. Nice dark hole and a little little wood piece that sticks out that they would land on to get in and out of their house. Kind of like a step. And then we'll color that in and another little one. And then I like to give it a bit of a wood grain texture. 
So I'm going to pull some lines down. And they're not perfect lines, they're broken lines. We're just implying some texture here. Not doing a full pattern. Okay. Do a little darker on the back of this house here. What I have to try and teach myself to do is slow down a little bit while I'm filming these. I feel like I have to draw quickly. And I really don't. I just feel the need to get it done and sketch as much as I can. And actually talk and communicate the lesson at the same time. <laughs> Multitasking. <laughs> Not always my strong suit. <laughs> okay, so there's one house. And then I can give this guy some texture as well. So it's all made out of the same material. And I tend to darken up the line underneath the roof here. So I'll put some sketch lines in. And then I'll come back and put a little bit smaller ones. And I'm going over my line, but I'm not worried about it. It's a sketch. It's supposed to have that rough, sketchy look. We don't want it perfect. We want it to look like a sketch. I'll pull those lines a little further down. And then I'm going to darken this line here. And I'm going to pull this line up. Now, normally I'd be working on an angle here, so if you don't mind, I am going to turn it a little bit. It's just a little easier than on my wrist doing this. There we go. A little wood grain in there. And a lot of you have been sharing your sketches with me on Instagram, which I'm absolutely loving, so thank you for that. I'm really happy. Nothing makes me happier than knowing people are giving it a go and being really pleased with their results. That makes me so, makes me so happy. I'm going to put a little shading on this front piece. And then I'll put just a, just a tiny indication of texture on that back piece. And there we go. Our first little label is done. And we could do something fun and whimsical like we did with the mushrooms. The little mushroom houses we did. And we'll just put some growth kind of thing. So it looks like it's part of the garden. Because it's fun. <laughs> Remember, it's coming from behind, so those lines will break. And we'll be hidden behind the houses. And you can really have fun with these. You could do ferns, you could do anything you want. Flowers. So there we go, do little berries maybe. And boy, is it ever raining. I can hear my sub pump going like crazy. All that snow's melting. Woohoo! I love snow, but I'm ready for it to be gone. I'm really missing some green here. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. And I darken up under here. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, just to make it recess back behind the birdhouse. So it looks like it's underneath it. Okay, so there's there's the first one. Let's do something on an angle. So we have, let's do our, so I want to, I'm going to angle it that way. So I'm going to offset it. I'm not going to do it centered. I'm going to do it a little further over. So I have room to angle. I'm going to do a triangle roof. So I'm going to start with a little, just do a little one here. And then I think I'll do something whimsical where it goes way up and curves and way down. And now I want to put the roof line in. So if I go straight back like this, it's not going to have as much dimension if I angle. So this is called what they call a vanishing point. So let me just show you a little thing about vanishing points. You've probably seen this before where you're a kid and you drew a dot, and then you drew the train track coming from that dot towards you, right? And the planks are bigger. And then they get further back, they get smaller, and they get closer together. And this is what gives you perspective. It's a cute little 
trick to make it look like this fades off into the distance. This is called a vanishing point. You can do the same if you put the vanishing point here and you do a road coming towards you kind of thing, right? It goes up over the up over the horizon line. So we have a horizon line. So sometimes you don't have a horizon line in your drawing. Like for instance, when we're doing a birdhouse, because what we're doing is we're essentially changing a square into a cube. So we can simply give ourselves the vanishing point by determining our perspective. So if we wanna look, um, but if we're looking up at the, the birdhouse, and here's the little home here, then we're gonna put our vanishing point above and we're gonna draw a line on all the corners, oops, all the corners back to that vanishing point. And now we have our cube, so we can make our birdhouse as fat or as thin as we want. Sorry, that line's wrong. So now we have our vanishing point and our three-dimensional box. Then you can put the roof on. Right, and the roof would also go to that vanishing point. And now I have my roof. Oops, that was the wrong line. Jeez Louise, there. So this is the front of the, it's a little bit messy right now because we have so many lines. But you can see that we've created a three-dimensional box. So here's the roof and here's the side of the, birdhouse and again you can make it as thick as you want because you've used that vanishing point so one more little lesson here if you did a vanishing point like this let's say we did another birdhouse the roof and that goes there that's going there this is going here so we got one point vanishing you can have a two point vanishing birdhouse where you have another house going here but its vanishing point is over here let's put it here and what's happening is you do want you want it roughly on the same line but now this birdhouse is facing that way and this birdhouse is facing this way so and you can change the size doesn't have to be the same size I'm gonna put my my shape in and I'm gonna bring it to that vanishing point and these are just cute little tips on how to achieve a three-dimensional surface, a three-dimensional object, I should say, as opposed to just a flat face-on perspective, right? Now you can start really playing. You can put another one behind with the vanishing points behind it. So this one, you're looking straight on. Here's the little opening, here's the opening. And now this one is looking straight at you. So these are all, say, on separate posts in the ground, but they're all facing different ways. And you get rid of this stuff here. And now you've drawn yourself a whole new perspective and angles and directions by just following these vanishing point rules. And this is a just a rough, a rough um, lesson. So if you really want to get into that sort of thing, then I would Google. Um, vanishing, how to draw vanishing points, and you can draw a whole whole town. It's really fun, fun thing to learn. So I'm going to go up here, and remember, I'm always bearing in mind my vanishing point in my head is over here, so I know that this line has to come back to that vanishing point. I hope that makes sense. Um, it's kind of hard to give an art lesson in a quick little, quick minute here, but like I said, you can Google it and get more information. So I did uh, I did the angles. So now I'm looking at a side perspective as a front perspective. And I'm gonna give it its little opening. And, oops, let's put this here. We don't want it too far away so that they can get in it. I'm gonna keep this pretty light. And then I'm going to, I want to give it a, a piece of wood that sits all the way around. So again, following that vanishing point rule, I'm going to give myself 
these angles, but would also all go to the vanishing point, which is way over here. And I'm gonna drop that down. So you could slow this part down. And we're gonna probably redraw that again if I move too fast. So some of the ideas for these birdhouses, <clears throat> I looked at uh, upcycled birdhouses ideas, and they came up with some really fun things like um, this one could sit on an old, uh, what is that called, like a railing pillar or an old tabletop, an old lamp. All those kind of things so it, it kind of gave me these ideas to to draw different bases on these so this one for example this this front layer that i did the first layer down was all sitting on different sticks and these were all mounted so oh, maybe not that one so mounted to things mounted to a tree to a fence line hanging from a chain uh, mounted to trees and hanging from a chain. So I tried to do a couple of different ideas for birdhouses. Th those sketches will be available on my Etsy if you are interested in supporting the channel. It, it does help me a lot, but I would love for you to also draw your own. So you can print them as a reference or just follow along with this video and draw your very own because I do encourage you to do that. So I'm just gonna darken up under here because it would be in shadow from the uh, from the birdhouse itself. Remember our contour lines? So I'm gonna follow with the flow and the shape of the object. I don't wanna just go straight back and forth or straight up and down. I'll darken in here. There, we have a little birdhouse. So let's do... Um, Let's do shingles on this one. So I'm gonna start with these kind of rough looking squares and they go opposite of each other. They go past the roof, the original roof line that we drew. And then just put these kind of fun details in. We did this with the mushrooms as well. So now you can do it with birdhouses. And again, just a sketch. I'm not doing it perfect, putting that implied shape in, just having fun. So on this side, we would see some of the texture of those shingles. We'll just put a little bit of texture on there, just to show that that side is also shingled. You could put some shading underneath the shingles here, just to give it a little bit more dimension. I'm just gonna do it nice and quick here. You can put details in pretty quick. Okay, so there's a little birdhouse. So let's maybe put something behind this one and I think we'll do some sort of seeded plant here. And I'm just scribbling. So if you did see my last video, I think it's my last video, um, we did grasses from the uh, British Isles. And boy, do I ever love doodling grass. And what a fun little textures they have and whimsy that I really like to add throughout my drawings now. And so you can see I'm adding in a, a kind of grass right now. Not a lot of detail, but a little something. And then just scribbling away, putting it behind. Kind of what I like about the dark grass is it really pops the um, the tree house, the tree house, the bird house forward. And then you can just put the stem of it down here. Something fun like that. And again, you're in this sort of thing, I am trying to find some fun compositions for this tiny little label, very narrow, long label. 
Now I could turn the labels even, just thought of it now, you could turn the labels this way and do several birdhouses across like that. Oh, just suddenly thought of that. So there you go. Oh, too fun. All right, let's do, um, let's do something with something in front of the birdhouses. So we could do a fence. So I'm going to do the, the good old fashioned picket fence here. And I think we'll maybe put that on a bit of an angle as well. So we're not looking at it face on. We're looking at it sideways. So we're looking at it just a little bit this way. So I can see the side of my fence on the one side. I'm just gonna repeat that shape. And another one. And then I'm gonna put the railing behind that holds it. <clears throat> Getting a sore throat, I can feel it. And then because we can see a little bit of the top of this, we'll see a little bit of the top of this. Just a little. All right, and then we could put some houses behind it. So let's do, let's just do straight on again. So we'll go birdhouse and a roof line. Thicken up that roof line, circle. Let's make it a double decker. <laughs> I can't draw a circle today. My hands are a little bit shaky today. So some days I can draw really well and others I'm all over the place. And we'll do the stick coming down, which would go right through the back of the fence. So we'll darken that up. I don't want to fill it in completely, but I do want it to show through the fence here. And then let's do, um, let's just fill this in so I don't forget. I mean, you can fill this in with anything, bricks, whatever you want. Oh, maybe the thunderstorm's passed. I'm not hearing it anymore. Okay. And let's do another little one here. We could tuck it behind, let's try that. So this one will be further back. So behind, it'll come out from behind. Do a little bottom of the house. So this one is further back. We could do a little step on this one just for fun. And we'll do the little, do the little hole down here so they actually have the step to step on just for something different. It doesn't have to be right in the middle. There we go. Pull the texture down. Darken it up a little so it looks like it's behind. <coughs> Excuse me, and we will give it a post as well. And then we'll do one more drawing. We'll do a round birdhouse. And we'll do it hanging from a chain. And that way, it kind of gives you ideas for it all. So now I'm just gonna put a little bit of grain in my fence. And the grain will run this way. You can get pencil crayons out. And let's put some flowers on this one. And 
there's something simple. So there's the center of the flower. Super simple flowers. Something like that. Just really cute and whimsy. And again, you put it in a very interesting composition. It's not just draw it whatever size you want. You have to fit it within that shape. And I really like that challenge. Okay, let's do one more. And let's do something round that hangs. So we're going to start with a round base. And we'll go up on either side. So we're creating kind of a cylinder shape. And we will put it on a chain. So let's do a cone. I, know, I haven't decided what kind of, I think we'll do, um, I should have dropped that lower actually so I can show you more of a chain. So let's start again. Sorry, we'll ignore that one. I want to show you how to draw the chain. So we'll drop it a little lower. We'll do the cylinder again. See, and that's beauty of scraps. It's not heartbreaking when you when you screw up, you just resketch. Okay, so this would be the roof line here, but I haven't decided what kind of. I think I'll do some sort of wood shingle or something. Let's let's decide actually. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a different shape at the top here. I'm gonna dome it out a bit, and then another dome. Just something different. So this could be. So see how I can just change it like that? And that's the beauty of sketching. So I'm gonna do kind of these fun slats of wood. So the one that's facing me comes straight down and as I draw them away, they start to curve away. And then you could do another one under here where the slats overlay themselves. And then this would be a little darker in here. Again, just a nice quick sketch. Think of materials that you can make birdhouses out of. And if you look at upcycled, you'll see all kinds of fun material, rusty tins, all kinds of fun stuff. So that's where I got some of my inspiration from. Oh. Nope, thunder's back. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna do a loop here. So I'm gonna do just half of it on either side because I wanna put my chain through it. So my first piece of chain would go past that loop because it's hooked underneath. And now I can finish the rest of my chain, my hoop, sorry. And now the other piece of chain is gonna come up and around, up and around, and I stop I don't want to go right through because that part of the chain is going to be hidden by the next link, which will come down like that. And now you've drawn yourself a chain. So I put a little bit of shading on the inside of the chain here. And now you have a hanging birdhouse. Kind of fun. Something different to do. You can do the, the uh, branch coming through it if you want. You can do whatever you like. Uh, let's put the house the uh, hole for the birds. Now you can make this out of anything. So let's decide what we want to make this house out of. And I think I want to make it out of planks. So I'm now going to square off the bottom a little. So I want to show you how you can easily change your mind when you're sketching. So I've got these planks that have been put together kind of like a barrel. And let's make it a barrel so we could put a steel a steel rim around it. So it'd be just a little bit past the outside line on here as it wraps around. And now we've got a steel rim holding the barrels together. Holding the slats together, I should say. So you see the contour line. I want to match it. If I go straight across, I flatten out my drawing. So I'm always looking at the contour. I was following how 
the shape comes together. So I'll just put a little bit of gap in between some of these boards. And now we have a cute little slatted birdhouse. Put a little shading under here. Make the roof line pop forward a little bit. None of my, I don't stay in the lines. Some days I stay in the lines better than other days. <laughs> and there you go, there's your little birdhouse hanging from a tree. You can just put the indication of a tree here if you want. You can put branches behind. If you want branches in front, you would draw those first. So draw the branches, oops, and then draw the birdhouse. That will help you with that. So there you go, there's some ideas. Just ignore this one. <laughs> and I uh, hope that gave you some ideas to make cute little birdhouse drawings and have a look around. You can put anything you like in your birdhouse. You can mount them to fences. We drew a fence so you can change up the fence. Uh, you know how to draw a chain now. Uh, for mounting them to the house, basically you're just gonna, or mounting them to a wall or a tree, you're just gonna draw whatever it is behind it or beside it however it's mounted. You put little flowers in there. Here's some foxglove, some whimsical things going up and around the, um, the post here, which I can show you real quick if you like, because it crosses in front. So you wanna make sure that you remember that when you're drawing. So let's say we're doing the post. I'm gonna cross in front. I'm gonna double up so that when I go to shade in this, I'm gonna be able to see it. I'm gonna wrap and then I'll continue drawing. I'll go up again. So this one is now gonna go behind. Oops, I'm in frame here. And then it's gonna come out the other side and cross. So you don't wanna draw this line straight up to begin with because where it comes in front, you wanna break that line and that's important even when you're sketching. So this one's gonna go behind so we can draw the line up and then it's gonna come out the other side. And that's how you draw a little vine going around something. So it'll give you an idea. So if you wanted to include that in your sketching. So now I'm putting this in front, but I know that I'm gonna add color to the leaf, so I'm not overly concerned about that line going through. And if I want to put a leaf behind, it stops where that line is. So I want to do one coming out from behind here. I don't draw the whole leaf, just draw what I can see. And it gives you dimension. All right, so another little lesson. There you go. <laughs> I can keep going and going. <laughs> so there you go. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope you have fun with it. Google Perspective. Uh, vanishing points. It will really help you do things three-dimensional and uh, bring your drawings to a new level. So uh, if you like that, please subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, share. And it really helps my channel and encourages me to continue teaching. And please uh, leave your comments on what you'd like to see next or uh, what you'd maybe like to see improved upon. Any constructive feedback is always welcome on my channel. So thank you so much. Have a great day, guys. Bye.